Hello and season's greetings to a very special Christmas episode of the festive Full Force Weekly brought to you by GeneralsJoesReborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic80. For today's episode, I am joined by, well, everyone. Eric, Dirty Arania Arania, Paddy Paduardo Leningrad Lennon, Patrick Not Picard Stewart, Brian the Hick Hickey, and our very own news hound, Justin Generals Joe's Bell. We will talk all about our top threes of the year, including G.I. Joe toys, non-G.I. Joe toys, and comics in what has been a rather odd 2020. Don't worry, we will also be covering all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. It's a festive Full Force Weekly! (laughs) (laughs) Amazing! I'm so excited. It's Christmas, but not really. You got two, uh, photos, two feet of snow on the ground too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What more could you ask for? Uh, probably not the world ending. But anyway. Right. So let's get stuck into the news. Uh, and in Transformers movie news, industry insider Daniel Richtman has reported that Paramount Pictures are in discussions for a possible R-rated Transformers project. He dropped the news on his Patreon page recently, and it has caused quite the stir. Justin, what are your thoughts about this one? Could you envision a Transformers movie with adult themes and swearing, also known as the 1986 animated movie? (laughs) Is it really necessary? I mean, I I don't know. I guess... Yes, it it, it is. (laughs) They're trying to hop on the hype train, I guess, from Deadpool and still trying to kind of figure out how to tap into that R-rated market. I mean, if we get some new Transformers film out of it, I guess that's fine. But I don't really see the need to to take Transformers down an R-rated path. I mean, it's, you know, I I guess they've already done, you know, Devastator's Ball swinging all over the place. I don't (laughs) think it could be any much worse than that. But, um, but yeah, I don't think it's necessary. You know, I'm all for Transformers, you know, giving Transformers movies another go. So if that's what it takes, then I'm, I'm on board, but I don't, I don't see it as being necessary. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's, ridiculous. It's a weird one. I don't know how I feel about it, actually. And I don't really know where the R rating would come from other than, like, violence. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, is, uh, is Megatron going to, like, stomp on humans and, like, just reduce them to a fine red paste or something? I mean, do we need to see that on the movie screen? I don't know. I, I mean, mean, there was enough killing and death in the original 2007 Transformers film, Michael Bay's film. I mean, just because you didn't see bodies getting ripped apart, you know, I mean... Los Angeles was destroyed for crying out loud. So, I mean, there's, uh, you know, I just, they can do what they want to do without going down that road. I mean, I don't need jazz throwing F bombs around or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. I don't see the point. Jazz to moon base two. Jazz to <laughs> moon base two. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, well, that's um, the cra- I mean, PG, you can get away with a ton in PG 13 yeah. these days. I mean, it's not like it used to be where, you know, you say one yeah. swear word and all of a sudden it's PG 13 or almost R. I mean, that's what I don't get. I mean, you can get across whatever you need to get across in PG 13. If it's going for an R rating, it's either going to be some kind of, you know, adult slapstick comedy sort of thing, which I really don't want, or it's going to be really extreme, unnecessary violence, which I also don't want. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not a crazy fan about it, honestly. And I don't think it's necessary. And also Transformers nah. is one of those things that does, it, you know, it, it expands more than just the adult kind of viewer. Like, totally. the, I mean, kids love that stuff. So, you know, that might be a little bit hard to, to take, I guess. But anyway... Um, I, I well, it's it's kind of in talks, or at least at least from um, from the, the the reports, it's one of those things that Paramount are kind of discussing at the moment. So I, it's probably you know it'll probably never see the light of day. Michael Bay actually yeah. did attempt at one point in the in the in the past, I think around about 2015, 2016, um, he even pitched an R-rated uh, Transformers movie. So. You know, like this isn't the first time this is this has kind of cropped up in terms of a theme, but I yeah I I really can't see it happening. And they I know they want they probably want something more box office successful than Bumblebee, but in terms of critical mm-hmm. success, it, it you know it seems to kind of please a lot of people. Bumblebee. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean I don't you know they seem to have the right formula um, you know with Bumblebee, and I don't really see where they need. To, I mean. Yes, they could build upon it and possibly make it a bigger, you know, financial success, I guess. But um, I don't, you know, when you've got something that seems to be working, why deviate from that at this point? Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Anyway, 
that's Transformers. Um, now, uh, in kind of, uh, I suppose, classified news. Regal Cobra Commander is here. Finally, GIJ Classified has managed to deliver one more figure before Christmas and it's Regal Cobra Commander, who's found his way into mailboxes this past week. I, for one, have really been excited to get this figure in hand and he does not disappoint. Justin, have you got him and what do you think? I did, I do. got him this week and, and I love him. I mean, it's it kind of speaks to um, how Classified is appealing to me at the moment, similar to how Sigma-6 did, where it's just, it's a repainted Cobra Commander. You know, we've got the other ones already, but I still really enjoyed, you know, the new vibrant paint scheme, the the bright gold. You know, if this was the only release of Cobra Commander, I probably wouldn't be such a fan, but because it's kind of a variant of the more, you know, muted, toned down version we already got, I love it. I think it's it's really got an interesting place in the collection, and I think it's really fun. I, I enjoyed getting it for sure. Yeah, and I, I think like in hand, the colours are just so vibrant, aren't they? Like there's a real rich kind of, I don't know, I, I, I'm really a big fan of this particular uh, this particular repaint. Um, I yeah. in, in talks with in Lenny in, in interviews and, and in other kind of situations, he has mentioned that the, they're probably not going to be touching this Cobra Commander mold for some time. So don't expect, I guess, a crimson version or... Don't expect a, a, another, you know, use of this body in the near future. Let's say anyway. So there'll probably be a long time before they come back to this Cobra Commander mold. I mean, we've had <laughs> three so far, and all in very close proximity to each other. So um, yeah. Uh, anyway, if you've got them, you know, uh, you guys have been sharing images with me, or or you know, with the with the full force on Twitter and Facebook all week, showing us that you've got your your regals in hand. Uh, what do you guys think about the uh, the figure? Are you happy to get another Cobra Commander? And are you looking forward to another one maybe in the future? Who knows? We're not. We're, we're good with this one. We're, we're good with Snake Supreme, <laughs> Regal, and Standard. That's good right now. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good to go. I'm just, I'm, I think next up is uh, Battle Battle Armor. That that would be kind of like an interesting one, wouldn't it? That would, yeah. If they can add some new tooling and do some stuff like that, that'd be pretty, in a six-inch scale, that could be pretty neat. That'd be amazing, I think. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so that's uh, that's classified news this week. Um, finally, in toy industry news, an interesting news story emerged this week regarding the current climate and its effect on the toy industry. A number of articles appeared that highlighted a boom in toy sales this holiday period, thanks mainly to what is being referred to as COVID guilt. Apparently, sales are largely better than usual for a number of companies, with the exception of Hasbro, due to a lot of their properties being tied up in the movie industry, which is taking a beating this year. Parents and grandparents are buying up an unprecedented amount of toys for their children to make up for the lack of regular school, holiday excursions and even cancelled events this hideous year. Justin, is this something you can attest to, being a parent? Uh, I'm a parent, but I'm buying myself all the, all the guilt toys. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> That's probably another. The, the your guilt, your COVID guilt, is for buying toys for yourself <laughs> and not for your kids. Yeah. Is I mean, have you have you noticed anything like that at all? Yeah, we we've tried to relax. Kind of, you know, we we typically run under a you know a certain budget for the kids, you know, and don't go too crazy on that. But we have tried to relax that a little bit. Um, but I think more than the the physical stuff is trying to relax some of you know like. The, our our youngest daughter we're giving a little bit extra screen time than we might normally give her just because you know we can't go out and do things like that you know we try to get her out in the backyard we bought a trampoline this summer so you know that, awesome. that maybe that's a COVID guilt purchase i guess yeah. buying a trampoline. <laughs> um you know bought nintendo switches for both kids so i guess in a way yeah that's part of the COVID guilt kind of cycle but um but yeah i mean it's 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 tricky, you know, trying to, nav you know, help them navigate this new world because it's tough enough for us, you know, 40 something year old adults who should know how to how to deal with, you know, this sort of not, not necessarily this sort of stuff, but deal with um, obstacles in our way. But for kids that really are still trying yeah. to learn how to live a normal life, having to, you know, suddenly get this very abnormal life in the middle of their growing process is extremely challenging but yeah I, i'm not sure guilt is necessarily the right term i mean i think we're just trying to help them navigate this challenging situation and if that includes you know giving them some sort of comfort comfort food so to speak to help get them through then i think that's only natural and and i don't see any fault in it whether it's relaxing you know your your strictness or you know buying some some stuff for them to kind of alleviate some of that sense of isolation um, either way i think 
you know, it, it's a consumer society and, you know, you hate to kind of feed into that, but at the same time, you know, you have to sort of give your children an opportunity to have something to appreciate and to enjoy and to, you know, kind of see them through these challenging times. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I guess it's not, not necessarily something they need to really apply a term to, but I definitely mm-hmm. feel as though it's a byproduct of the situation. Like, you know, you're, you are cooped up indoors all the time. You can't go out and do other things. So yes, other things will take those, will take that kind of space, you know, and fill that gap. Right. So, you know, toys makes, you know, makes sense that, that toys are kind of maybe doing that for, for a lot of other people, a lot of other families. And um, mm-hmm. what is interesting as well was the fact that obviously Hasbro, who have so many movie tie-ins, you know, like Snake Eyes being delayed, they would have had product out for that. Um, right. You know, Black Widow, uh, the, the toys that were on the shelves for a while and the film never kind of emerged. So you, you, they're struggling in a different way, um, you know, like, and which is where it, it's funny because the amount of properties and brands that they have that are theirs you think they could they could have weathered that storm, but unfortunately, they've put all their eggs in one basket this year, haven't they? Yeah, they seem to do that. Yeah, I mean, they they really depend on, uh, almost rely on that you know sort of Hollywood support to kind of fuel some of these toy sales or a lot of these toy sales, and I think that's kind of the double edged sword you run into where they seem to be going you know reducing their their own IP piece by piece and depending on licensing and depending so much on you know you know, piggybacking off of these grandiose movie releases that when the, something like this happens, I mean, who could, who could have foreseen something like this happening, but when it does, you know, you're kind of SOL. I mean, you, you have all this black widow stuff that was already in the pipeline. They couldn't really stop it from coming. Um, you know, to, you, everything was driven so much by coordinating schedules and releasing things just right. And um, I think in a way they were a little bit fortunate that, you know, this all hit when snake eyes was still, you know, quite a ways in the future that at least they could kind of stop their production or release of the movie toys and postpone that for when the movie actually comes out rather than black widow where yeah. I mean, who knows you know what's going to happen when that's released are they just going to re-release the toys that already got released you know several months ago or you know how are they going to approach that so it adds, adds all sorts of logistical challenges to something that's already pretty complicated logistically to kind of orient the toy production and the movie release and things like that. I mean, as we know from our past history with, you know, G.I. Joe retaliation, you know, when uh, movies get shuffled around, it can just totally blow a toy line completely out of the water. Um, and even in normal circumstances where that first wave of re- retaliation action figures was based on concept art that didn't even end up getting used in the film. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, there's a train wreck, you know, at every, every, yeah, at every turn and this sort of stuff only makes it more complicated. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, Mary, christmas everyone um <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh by yeah, the way I, buy yourself a bunch of toys yeah exactly just go out and you know to spend money retail therapy uh that seems to i mean yeah. you know that, that seems to have been the case this year um really interesting kind of article we'll post it in the uh you know in the description in the links down below so you can check that out and and see what you think but anyway um justin very minimal news week but to be honest was filming this slightly earlier than usual because obviously i've got lots of work to do with these top threes that we're doing and that's what's coming up next actually Okay, I've actually given everyone on the team the task of compiling their own top threes of 2020. And we're actually going to start with you, mate. So we'll start with, and we've we've split, I've split this up into four segments. We've got top G.I. Joe toys of 2020, and that just means as in the G.I. Joe team. Uh, Top Cobra figures of 2020. Uh, We've also got G.I. Joe merchandise, top three of 2020, and uh, non-Joe toy brands. Uh, toys that have come out this year as well so if you could take us through three to one um and give us a little bit of uh you know insight as to why you've made those choices uh we're starting with gi joe toys of 2020 please mate all right well my my top three gi joe toys are all gi joe classified figures as somebody might expect simply because i mean that's (laughs) that's been my brand of choice this year i mean the retro stuff has its place but gi joe classified has really been what's blown me away. And, and I'd say number three, I'd put G.I. Joe classified Duke. Um, nice. Pretty simple, you know, straightforward military figure, had some nice vintage uh, references, really, you know, one of the, the only first wave figures that actually had relatively accurate military weapons. Um, you know, even looking at, 
you know, what we see for upcoming releases, you know, a few months from now, Duke already is starting to look a little bit dated, you know, with his gold shin guards and stuff like that. But I still love the figure. and I still think it was a great representation of the character. Um, so he comes in at number three. Um, number two, I would say classified gung ho. I've yeah. heard a lot of people complain about um, the classified version of gung ho. You know, the hat's not quite right or his tattoos a little weird, but I think the figure is fantastic. Like Duke, he's got some, relatively you know military looking weapons he's a much larger bulkier figure i love that head sculpt i love his accessories um i think they just did a fantastic job with gung-ho i haven't really understood some of the fan hate for the figure i think it's been a really great addition to the classified line i've loved it um That's a great but number idea. one yeah but uh obviously i think number one um for the gi joe gi joe uh, toys of the year um, would have to be the Hasbro Pulse version of G.I. Joe's Snake Eyes. Um, number one, I mean, it was kind of our first introduction to the classified line. It was that first taste of what this figure uh, line would look like, what the articulation would be like. Plus, it had that huge kind of ninja stand with all the different ninja weapons. It came with the actual Uzi and the silencer that actually fit on and off. Uh, the figure was just about as close to perfect as you could get. It really captured all of the spirit of Snake Eyes' character, and showed you really what Hasbro was able to do in this modern scale and modern articulation format. And I think it really will, it encapsulated G.I. Joe classified perfectly from the G.I. Joe sense. Absolutely. Cracking top three there, mate. Um, obviously, Duke, yeah, good solid figure. Gung Ho, another beauty. And I love the uh, the new haircut he got and the uh, and the hat. Yeah. And pretty neat. And yeah, you're right. Like that deluxe snake eyes, uh, as you'll probably find later in other people's top threes uh, i think snake eyes probably gets a, a couple of shouts uh but yeah that's yep. that's awesome man that's really cool uh, okay well you've you've done your gi joes uh, take us through your cobra team now please yeah the cobra team was was a little bit trickier um although not much i mean there were some pretty pretty clear kind of uh shining stars among the the cobra figures we got i would say number three was the target exclusive baroness with the cobra coil motorcycle i think they did a really awesome job modernizing the look of the figure but still maintaining some of those classic elements um you know i wasn't the, the elbow articulation she might be a little higher on the list if she had better elbow articulation but um the figure just looks gorgeous i love her accessories um, even though a lot of people don't really love the motorcycle i thought it was a neat really cool addition so i just think that was uh, a great piece of the cobra arsenal that got released this year um, number two, I would say the G.I. Joe classified Destro figure. Um, if I had any complaints about Destro, he's a little bit too on the nose to the vintage version, but I think they did wrap enough modern elements into him to really make a fantastic figure. He's, he's got all those great hallmarks of, of a really awesome Destro update. Um, the red collar, you know, the, the weapon, the briefcase. Um, it's just a really solid, really great figure and, and definitely an awesome Cobra uh, addition as well. Um, but number one on the list, without a doubt, this one, I knew this would come in number one on my list immediately. Um, even though it's been somewhat hard to get, um, the Target exclusive uh, Cobra Trooper is going to be my number one pick hey. for Cobra for this year. Um, I agree, you know, it's been kind of a pain tracking them down. I actually have managed to get about 10 or 12 of them. Um, most of them bought uh, for too much money on the secondary market, but... Wow. You got to do what you got to do. But uh, <laughs> but the figure is fantastic. I mean, the web gear, the updated kind of face sculpt, um, the accessories, the colors, uh, it's pretty much the perfect update to to a Cobra Trooper. It really makes them look more sort of tactical. Um, and I just love it. And, and I'm really, I don't regret a single one of the purchases, even with the Cobra Infantry coming out next year. Um, I'm still glad I, I took the plunge and stocked up on some of these guys. It's been my favorite figure, of, you know, my favorite G.I. Joe classified figure on the Joe or the Cobra side pretty much all year long. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's fantastic. Great shout on those three as well. Yeah, I mean, like you say, the Destro uh, on the nose with the design, but they've like thrown, if you, if you really get into the details of that figure, you see that's where you see the uh, the kind of new um, aspects, yeah. I guess, but yeah, totally. And, and the Cobra Trooper, just unreal. Baroness, fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, I agree with those, absolutely. Uh, okay, so moving on to your Joe merch of 2020, then, please, bud. Um, so number three, I think I would go with the Jada Toys kind of GI Joe mini vehicle. I'm, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, I'm not gonna pick one of them, but I'm gonna pick the whole three pack. Um, it came with the Hiss and the Snowcat and the Vamp Mark II. Uh, I really awesome. think those micro vehicles are a really neat addition to the G.I. Joe lore. It's not something they've done very often. They have done it, but not not very often. And I really think um, they did a pretty cool job on these. Um, I would like to get, you know, I'd, I'd love to see them make a bunch more. I, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen 
a whole lot of future assortments of these yet. But um, but yeah, I think it's really cool that you can just go into um, you know, Walmart and pick up a, a three pack of these nice little mini GI Joe vehicles. It's awesome. Um, for number two, I would say, um, the life-sized Cobra Commander helmet. I love the fact that it's a helmet that you can actually wear and it's got that reflective surface on it. Um, I think they did a really killer job on that as well. And it's relatively affordable. Um, so that's just a really cool thing to have as a kind of a, a display piece, or for any of those cosplay folks who are into that sort of thing, you, you have that, you know, at retail shelves as well. Um, but number one, I have to give that to uh, G.I. Joe Operation Blackouts. I know it's gotten a lot of kind of, you know, scowls amongst the fandom about not being the most perfect uh, video game adaptation of G.I. Joe. But just the fact that I can sit down at my, my PlayStation 4 and play a G.I. Joe video game is really, really awesome. And I love that they've used the classified designs for the characters um it's just been a lot of fun to play the game and and uh, i think that that wins my number one prize for gi joe non-figure merchandise for the year absolutely i think again cracking lineup there the figure the little vehicles are so cute and adorable um the and they have i suppose they kind of have revealed some future stuff at toy fair yeah. that they didn't want to reveal but that's <laughs> it's out there um so we're going to be getting more of that i imagine and uh um, sure. yeah the the operation blackout the helmet sorry the cobra commander's helmet is insane i have that yeah. myself it's wonderful i can't like recommend it enough and the um operation blackout has been so much fun just like Tr yeah. talking to you about it like most like most weeks when we are discussing kind of the news and stuff but yeah really cool great addition to the computer games for gi joe and yeah really happy about that um brilliant justin fantastic so finally then what are your three non-joe toys of 2020 man it's 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 kind of funny because um you know i've kind of gone and gone through cycles of my toy buying um and there was a period of time where i i kind of was stepping away a little bit from from uh, most action figure lines and thinking, you know, it's a good opportunity maybe for me to dial back and not buy so much stuff. And, you know, I'm getting a little older. Maybe it's time to downsize and things like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but uh, but a funny thing happened. And, and um, you know, NECA is kind of a, a figure line, a figure company that I've kind of looked at from the periphery. I've never really jumped headlong into their toys, even though I love Aliens, I love Predator, I like a lot of their licenses. I've just never invested in any of their toys. But for whatever reason, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lines, the various, the movie line and the animated line have really intrigued me. Um, I'm, I love the 1990 movie. I probably, it's my, my favorite iteration of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I like it more than most of the comics. I like it more than most of the cartoons. For some reason, that was just kind of the perfect blend. Um, and it hit me right at the right age, I guess, and right at the right time. Uh, I just absolutely fell in love with that movie. So I had to kind of, you know, dip my toes into the NECA um, movie line waters and and i would say out of all of those figures the the casey jones and raphael two pack are probably my favorite just because i love that rendition of casey jones in the film you know raphael yeah. with kind of the the actual trench coat and hat that that disguise him and stuff that it, it's a really classic scene from the movie i really love that whole interaction between raf and casey during that scene um you gotta know and... what a crumpet is to understand <laughs> cricket <laughs> Love that. Love that. Whacking him in the face with a cricket bat. I mean, geez, yeah. It's, it's, you know, you look at it now and it kind of seems cheesy, but man, in 1990, I was like, oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. I was all about that. You know, it was fantastic. I, mate, I think it's aged really well, that movie. I love it. I yeah, think it's fantastic. It actually has. I watch yeah. it regularly. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's aged a lot better than some of those other late 80s, you know, early 90s uh, superhero movies, oh, that's for sure. Big time. Big time. Um, big shout out to Adam Riches as well for hooking us up with those. Um, did he, he oh, hook yeah. You up absolutely. With that one? He did. He yeah, did. He, yeah. He found them in Florida, didn't he? And then he, he yep. kind of dispersed them to us all. It was like it was yes. fantastic. Yeah. One of the one of the few NECA TM, TMNT figures that actually got at relative retail prices. I mean, the, the others were kind of exorbitantly mm. overpriced on eBay and various <laughs> places. But, um, <laughs> But kind of what's really been interesting about kind of my toy buying habits, especially when it comes to NECA and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is that I've never really been a huge fan of the TMNT animated series. You know, it was it kind of got released, you know, a little bit. You know, I was a little older. You know, I, you know, I wasn't, you I wasn't really in my wheelhouse. Six, six <laughs> at the time. Yeah. No, I'm not that old. Come on. Cut me some slack here. <laughs> Um, but I loved the, the comics at the time and, you know, I, I really wanted to love the cartoon. So I watched some of it, but it's just, it was too silly for me at the time. You know, I was, I was a mature young man and just, I had no time for this silliness on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, 
But something that NECA did with their animated figure line really grabbed me. You know, I've always been a fan of kind of seeing the cartoons sort of come to life in action figures. And typically I, I do that with like Transformers and G.I. Joe. I love seeing how they can bring those animated models to life. But the way that NECA has done their animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line, even though I don't really like the cartoon, the, the character designs are so pervasive and so familiar and so nostalgic that I, I see them and I'm like, wow, this is really, these are great. Um, and I had a friend that had some of, that ended up with an extra, I think Leonardo and Shredder two pack. And um, he was selling it at retail and, and, you know, just asked if anybody wanted it. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. What the heck? It's, you know, it's inexpensive enough that I can check it out. And I just, I absolutely fell in love. Um, so from there, I bought the rest of the turtles and, and um, bought a few other things here and there. I still haven't quite pulled the trigger on April and Casey yet that are, you know, I can't, mm. I don't have anybody who's found them at retail. So it'd be, you know, a hundred dollar purchase on eBay. And I'm not quite ready to do that yet, but, I'm sure I'll get there eventually. But uh, one thing I did get, um, and I also bought this on eBay, but I found it at a relatively, you know, what I'm guessing is a decent price. It's, it's over retail, yeah. I'm sure, but um, was the the new Android body for Krang, which was something that amazing. That, oh, it's, it looks so much. It's I think it's a really great kind of animated representation of the character from the TV screen. And if I remember right, like I don't know if Playmates, I know they did a version of that figure back in the day, yeah. but I don't think they ever they really did. gave it. They, they didn't really give it the full full credit it deserved, I think, on the screen. It became such a central character on that animated show that I felt like I just kind of had to have it. And I pulled the trigger, probably overspent a little bit, but um, but the figure's just <laughs> fantastic. I mean, it looks like he stepped right out of the TV screen, and, and um, it's just you a, getting a any really COVID fun guilt? figure. Yeah, you uh, COVID, COVID guilt, guilt all over the place. All over the place. <laughs> I am drenched in COVID guilt. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's gross. <laughs> um but yeah that's I, amazing i i really love that figure I, I keep on telling myself that okay I, I just need this figure and this figure and i'm all done with my and then i'm done yeah, teenage yeah. Vintage turtles line but i then i bought a two-pack of the triceratons you know a couple of weeks ago and i'm just i'm a mess so it's, a, it's um, an amazing line necker are really yeah. knocking out of the park aren't they really they with have. that stuff and I've heard, you know, rumors that their figures aren't the most durable, but I haven't had any problems with any of these TMNT figures yet. You know, I, you know I'm careful when I take them out of the package and, you know, kind of work the joints, use a hairdryer, things are a little bit stuck. But, uh, but you know, so far I've been very happy with that toy line as a whole. Um, Fantastic. So that's my number two. And then, of course, uh, for number one, um, dun, and dun, I'm kind dun. of... <laughs> I'm right in the thick of it now. It's a good time to have this conversation because we're on day... Uh, 23 of the Boss Fight 2020 Advent Calendar, and oh, I am man. absolutely I don't have much time to edit this podcast, it. do I? No, you better get moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this has been by far my my absolute favorite non GI Joe toy this year. Just the introduction to kind of the Series Z universe, um, the way they kind of wove the holiday theme into the figures, um, just the opening the the doors every day to kind of see another piece of the puzzle kind of revealed. Uh, it's been really, really fun. I've really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I've kind of watched in jealousy as my children open their advent calendars every day. And then now I've got my own. And hopefully this is something that kind of becomes standard issue going forward. Because I've had so much fun with it. I just post the new figures on on the website. You know, I, I run this Vitruvian Facts kind of figure database. And I uh, post new the new pieces on that every day. And it comes becomes kind of an event, kind of part of the routine. And I'm just really excited yeah. to kind of see it all sort of, it's mostly come together at this point. I've got one more drawer to open tomorrow, um, but uh, I'm really, really fired up. And I just think this has been a fantastic thing for Boss Fight to put together. And I've really enjoyed it and I hope it becomes something they do going forward. And it is far away my, my number one toy of the year. That's amazing. And it has been a lot of fun. Yeah, obviously we've got one as well. And uh, we've been opening them, even though we know what's in there. <laughs> We know we know what's coming. Uh, I had to take. I remember uh, going back a few months. I had to take well, quite a lot actually, probably about four or five months. I had to take pictures of all of the different things that were going to be in there. So yep. we had all these amazing product shots of on this like amazing diorama and everything. So I th I imagine those images will probably creep out after after Christmas. But yeah, it's no. been amazing seeing people opening it and getting really excited for everything. And it's a crack. It. I mean, it's so. There's so much stuff in there. It there is, is ridiculous. Yeah, I've heard so, people kind yeah. of say, oh, 90 bucks, that's expensive. But you sit back and you look at all that. I mean, it's, it's worth There's every more penny. than that. There's more yeah. than that in there. I'll tell Absolutely. you that much. 
Absolutely. It's all exclusive. It's all brand new, new repainted yeah. stuff, you know. So, you know, I, I say like maybe some, sorry, reused stuff in some cases, but repainted. Right. But there's a lot yeah. of new stuff in there. So, uh, yeah, incredible, incredible. Great top three yeah. there, mate. Fantastic top three. And and really, I suppose, very uh, apt to give it the, the number one to give your uh, the advent calendar on such a such a time that we're yeah. in right now, you know, with Christmas. So, exactly. uh, <laughs> well, anyway, let's. Um, is that what let's, it is? Let's, I, let's... I've lost track of time. You know, I thought it was still April. It, well, it feels like it's we're still in bloody April, isn't it? What a <laughs> slog! Uh, okay. In fact, this this year's weird. Like it started off like when co- when the quarantine hit, like it just felt like it was going to last forever, and then right. all of a sudden, just we're in Christmas. It's like what happened? It insane. Time it doesn't is. work the same anymore, does it? No. Um, it doesn't. Anyway. Let's see what the rest of the team have to uh, to say for their top threes, including myself. I'll tell you mine uh, after this explosion. Um, and yeah, here we go. So as I mentioned in the last segment with Justin, we are dropping our top threes and now I am joined by three more of the degenerate Full Force team, Eric Aranya, Paddy Lennon and Pat Stewart. Starting with you, Paddy, Let's go through our top three Joe toys of the year. Give us your number three, mate, and uh, and work through it that way. Grand. So starting with number three, this is actually the first classified figure I managed to get my hands on. And um, it's not a bad figure at all, really. Um, I'm picking classified Scarlet as my top, my, my number Ooh. three Joe for the year. Nice. Um, really like the figure. I like the design. that It's a mesh of a couple of different Scarlet designs. There's a little bit of Devil's Dew in there, a little bit of the rich vintage um you know but a nice update to her as well um the one small downside is there's nowhere for her to stick her crossbow oh, um, i wonder what you were going to say then <laughs> <laughs> if she had if she had a hook or something for her crossbow so you could put it out of the way amazing figure um uh, but other than that other than that he's really really good even beachhead has a place to stick his crossbow doesn't he <laughs> um so she doesn't um you know women getting, women getting shafted again in the workplace or not in this um, case yeah yeah so um like i said if if she had that just that one small thing and it's something i'll come back to later and um, she'd be a perfect figure um but she's great i really like the knives and stuff she comes with i really like the um yeah you know she doesn't have too many accessories but what she has is what she needs um and i really like the face sculpt and the head sculpt on her as well you know the oh, fractal yeah. paintings, and the digital painting on the face, um, really makes her look really, really great. She's she's a really nice figure of those classifieds. I really like her a lot. Yeah, top top notch. The the face on Scarlet was one of the reasons why I really like that figure too. So it's it's nice to see that the reasoning behind us liking the same figures is is actually the same. And also, we've got a new Scarlet coming out with a slightly different paint scheme and also face paint scheme as well so uh yeah are you have you what, what are your thoughts on that one paddy by the way i mean i don't need to buy it but it's nice that it's getting out there again um i thought you would gotta, be. Get, gotta, gotta get those molds repainted you know <laughs> I mean, I, one of the things i really like about her face paint is the freckles mm. is mm. a really nice touch something you could almost it's almost impossible to do on a four inch scale so it's a really nice touch on the uh six inch figure that she has that yeah, she's absolutely cool. I, lo- I love that Scarlet figure. Very, very awesome. Uh, Paddy, take us through your number two then, if you would, bud. Grant, so this is probably the best four-inch snake eyes of all time. So it's very, very nicely got re-released in the retro series. And that is obviously retro snake eyes. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> no. um, again, probably the best snake eyes figure ever made. Um, getting him out there again. I know he doesn't look anything like the card art. Um, but you know, get them out there again, let people buy them. Um, I have that figure like four times already, and I still bought the retro version just because, well, you don't pass up an opportunity to buy that figure again. True, uh, I would, I would correct you though. The, the best version of Snake Eyes is the uh, or a vintage version four. Um, moving on qu- uh, swiftly, <laughs> uh, I look at Pat shaking his head. How dare you, Pat? How dare you? Um, version three. Oh, oh! So you're the you're the you're the chest trench oh, knife, oh, yeah. right? No, it's been like more than one. Snake snake you clowns. Snake. It's one. How have we all got <laughs> different snake eyes favorites? Yeah, right? That is amazing. I, like, that... I will say, uh, on the regarding the uh, retro snake eyes, 
I, I agree that that's one of the best Snake Eyes, certainly for the modern era, one of the best Snake Eyes figures ever made. But um, I would have loved if they'd gone in and sculpted new legs to actually um, mimic his original design with like the bomb on the side and the kind of stirrup pant design that he and Flash and Grand Slam had. Like I, I, that would have made that figure like, you know, absolutely amazing to me i'd have liked to seen like maybe an additional commando head as well in that set oh, that, make, yeah. make it like a, a an ultimate kind of style maneuver especially if they like had kind of designed it like uh the way like um kind of iconically the way larry hama drew it in oh issue yeah 21. like that's how i always picture snake eyes's original mask in my head but I have to. I, I agree, Paddy. I think it's a cracking figure, and it's a perfectly good shout for for your top three of the year. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. So uh, your number one. Oh, I'm excited. Well, I know what it is because I've got a document in front of me that tells me exactly what it is. But still, I'm excited. <laughs> for my number one, I've picked an other classified figure. Shocking. Uh, two two six inch figures in my top three. I never thought that would happen at the start of this year. <laughs> um, I picked, uh, classified snake eyes. Uh, as my number one figure of the year. Um, what can I say about it? It's um, I'm sure you guys have probably put it in your top trees as well. Um, it's a fantastic figure. Um, a really, really nice update to Snake Eyes while still keeping recognizable elements. He's like, a, again, he's like an amalgamation of all these different Snake Eyes versions that we've had like 90 of already. Um, and the really, rest. Really, nice. <laughs> really, really posable. Um, and yeah, I just really, really like it. Again, as my same complaint that he has with Scar that, that there is with Scarlet, I can't find anywhere to put that bloody submachine gun on him anywhere. Um, he needs another hook somewhere so I can have him not carrying that all the time. Um, but otherwise, he's great figure. Awesome. Yeah. And are we talking the retail version or are we talking the deluxe the version? version. Oh, okay, I'm, cool. not, I'm not rich enough to get the deluxe version. Oh, that's, that's a shame. Um, they're, both, they're both amazing figures, but I actually... I actually really appreciate that the retail version has like laser blasters and stuff instead of the the kind of iconic Uzi. Um, I I just feel moving away from real guns is something that GI Joe and Hasbro should be doing. And it, I actually it, I think the blaster look actually looks really cool as well. Like as yeah. a sci-fi blaster, it looks awesome. I love yeah. the, I love the Nerf tines personally. I think oh yeah, I think that is one of the the biggest missteps in previous. Um, kind of releases and 100%. never really having like a G.I. Joe nerf line yeah. in a big way, you know, like when the, the lines were out. So I think having that that tie in now, it sh I'm, and again, I'm also surprised maybe it's got, you know, something to do with the pandemic and all that stuff, but the fact we haven't seen the the guns that we, the, the weapons, the blasters we've seen in the classified series being re released as, as nerf G.I. Joe branded stuff. Maybe we will. Yeah, we might. I mean, they're doing it now with Mandalorian nerf weapons and stuff, so it's it's cool that they're branching out. You scruffy looking nerf herder. I am um, very scruffy today. I know I know you're a I know you're a massive fan of the nerf stuff, Pat. Yeah, absolutely. I that's that's one of the things that I've enjoyed about the line. I mean, it's the the nerf guns are kind of also they already have a place in among fans, I should I should say, yeah. there's fans of Nerf, so I kind of feel like some of those people may be actually drawn into GI Joe by their inclusion. Yeah, totally. Um, and it, well, it's drawn me in. I, every time I go to a, if well, not now, but when I was going to like Target and Walmart, I was always checking the Nerf file to see like what guns are in there, what blasters are in there to kind of to grab from the the classified range. Uh, and there's actually surprising quite a few still on the shelves. That I actually using. saw the um, I saw Gung Ho's grenade launcher, grenade launcher, and the Cobra Troopers blaster uh, in Smiths the other day. And Amazing! I'm like, no, no, no! Do not buy that. Do not buy those. <laughs> <Don't laughs> You're spending too much money in Smiths <laughs> already. Uh, amazing. Uh, okay, well, that's your top three, mate, and a pretty solid one at that. Very Snake Eyes heavy. I'm not surprised. You're the biggest Snake Eyes fan ever. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Snake Eyes quite a bit. Uh, let's let's join let's join Patrick and let's get his top three. Starting with his number three pick, please. My number three was the Target exclusive Special Missions Cobra Island Classified Beachhead. Nice. 
And the reason why I chose this is the six inch line is still relatively new. And I think that all of us are kind of, we're, we're just kind of looking at it to see how GI Joe it was going to be. And whenever I saw that red beret, it really spoke to me. It kind of told me that the people who are designing this toy line really know GI Joe. And I think that I said to one of you, you know, people aren't going to understand where this is from. And instantly there was messages online, people saying, why does he have the red berets? <laughs> the Hasbro designers knowing better. Yeah. But that definitely was one of the reasons why I, I really uh, stuck to the six inch line. I'm, I'm, I'm really into it. And that's, uh, that's certainly one of the reasons. Yeah, I'm, I think with the beret, that was one of the things I always noticed on the vintage figure. It was just one of those things that, you, you, you know, when you, when you pour over these toys, because that's all you have at the time, you don't have all the mm -hmm. other stuff to distract you. It's like, that was one of the, the beauty parts of the, the line was the fact that you could kind of look at these figures and really study them. And the, and the, the beret tucked in the, in the kind of the shoulder strap was just amazing because there was so much... Because my dad was in the forces, so there were so much aspects that he would quite be quite interested in seeing in some of those figures that would mimic the military vibe of things. You know, the balaclavas, the the weapons, the the kind of gear they were wearing. So that was always one of those things that that stood out to me was that that beret. So it was when I saw that, it was like an instant connection. When I saw that image, it was like, yeah, that's spot on. It was. On. It was also on, on the original figure. It was the only spot of color on them and it was so clearly like a beret yeah. tucked into the to the to the epaulette and it was just such a cool little detail it was very cool that they do you know what my dad bought me a parachute regiment beret right with the from like a beckett's uh beckett's um what do you call it uh army surplus store and i remember having as a kid i used to wear it all the time he made me kind of wear it the proper way and like have the the distance from the you know, like where the, the actual um, the actual uh, badge itself that was on the actual the brooch that was on actually on the beret had to be a certain distance away from that the left top of the left eye and everything was like perfect. So I had that beret like all the time when I was like up playing army. And guess what I did with it all the time? Rolled it up and stuffed it under the the shoulder strap <laughs> of my uh, my army shirt because it was like. I saw that on Beachhead, and I would always do it as a kid. I may even have a picture of that, but I'll have to. I'll have to get the uh, the folks to dig it out. But um, yeah, that was that was another reason why I absolutely adore the fact they included that beret. Big big shout there, Pat. Fantastic, mate. Hey, and uh, my number two is. <laughs> Sorry, num you said number two. Sorry, carry on. My number two is Retro Series Roadblock. I think that there could almost be an entire topic that we could have of. Who were your childhood Joes? <laughs> That's actually a really good segment, yeah. 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 I, I think that everybody's probably always a little more attached to the figures that they had as a kid and that they played with. And Roadblock was one of the ones that I had. As soon as I got him, you know, he was like the strong man on the G.I. Joe team. And I always w kind of wanted an update from that original 25th set to Roadblock. And this one definitely did that so I, i'm happy to have it i was very eager to see whether or not he had the tank top with camo underneath and he does so amazing points for me i really like that figure and the classified uh kind of Written that, head sculpt as well. yeah that was yeah. that was actually confirmed wasn't it that they they scaled down the classified head to to do for the retro figure which is brilliant like that's like a really cool way of you know, one getting a new, getting something new for a, a figure we've seen multiple releases of, uh, but at the same time, almost kind of not saving money, but like saving time and effort by just scaling down something that's already been sculpted and. and yeah, it, and it saves time because it's digital sculpt. Yeah, and then it is much easier to all you have to do is rescale it and change the cavity to match the the four inch figure. And, it, and yeah, it is. It, it's 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 only a, a time saver, really. Um, but yeah, it's a great it's a great thing with uh, digital sculpting that you can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, cool, man. Good shout, good shout, Pat. Like that one. And then my number one GI Joe is Classified Scarlet, and Ooh. I am primarily a three and three quarter inch collector. Uh, not just GI Joe, but I tend to enjoy 
almost any other three and three quarter inch toy line. So pulling me into six inch wasn't going to be too difficult since it's GI Joe, <laughs> but I did want to see something that really pulled me in right away. And we already discussed the freckles on, on Scarlet. She just has a, a face that seems have a lot of character to it. So it, it, that, that was the figure in wave one that I looked at and said, okay, I am definitely in. The, the other thing I'd say about Scarlet is the Phil Noto art for her Ooh. box really stood in her as well. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That that was the one where I kind of felt like the art on the box tells a story about the character. And since there's not really space for the file cards, the art on Scarlet's box really is excellent. That is a really good point, actually, that you bring up there. The art does act effectively as a file card doesn't it like that is something that's that's some yeah because obviously we don't have that uh on the back of the of the the package and we do have like the website tie-in and everything but you're right there's there's something that the art does tell stories and that's uh that's really interesting good point to make actually and hers has a lot of different aspects to it whenever you look at it it kind of tells you her hand-to-hand combat abilities as well as just gives her a lot of uh it, it makes her look like she's had a lot of experience as well easy um <laughs> no that's that's great G- great top three again pat uh moving on then eric uh start with start us off with your number three please pal okay my uh my number three is actually the target exclusive special missions classified roadblock oh v2 i like it yeah the version two i i really love the kind of changes and additions that they made well, one of my one of my kind of complaints about classified um they're all gorgeous figures. Oh, like, I, I, you're going to say they're all awful. They're I all hate trash. them. No, that's that's I, my one complaint about classified is I hate them all. Yes, <laughs> I um I don't I don't collect them. I, I don't as nowadays I don't collect a lot anymore. But whenever I'm at Chris's house, I play with all his. So classified true. Figures. He literally destroyed this whole line up here. I, I'm always messing with them, and um they're they're really great figures. I just don't collect a lot of stuff anymore. But um. That version two roadblock. What one of my complaints about the line overall is, I wish they'd pushed even further from a real American hero. The personal choice. I think nowadays they they really need to kind of wipe the slate clean and kind of start over as more science fictiony. And one of the things I love about that second roadblock is it pushes away from every variation of roadblock we've ever had it wasn't they didn't just uh, oh we're doing another roadblock let's do tiger force or night force or something like that they gave him a new look a new style a new thing i love the rail gun that comes with both roadblocks i think it's dope think awesome the and, like, broiler it's, like, the, it's, it's, the, the, full beard it's the broiler just, isn't it for the version two yeah i love that and this, uh, yeah i love that and i love the sunglasses and stuff but he, like he's just such a cool figure my only real complaint about him is i wish he had some sort of vest or a harness like even if it was the same vests that came with the version one and it was like a different color. But even then, I would almost love if he had like, you know, like a bandolier of like canister, like energy canisters that plugged into the gun or something like something really cool to like kind of. It's a, it's a web gear and like a knife hole. A, a knife something, with yeah. Hole. Yeah, because he only, he only has that gun, that big gun. And I wish he had like a sidearm of some kind or something like mm-hmm. that. And it could be like in a holster on a, on a harness or something but yeah i i really like that figure a lot i think it would have been cool uh and hear me out on this if his secondary was actually just the scaffolding to hold the breacher or the broiler in position like oh, kind yeah, of like, the, like, like like the aliens kind of minigun or like you yeah, know repeater I, 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 and stuff like that i designed a thing like that for uh um marauder one didn't you marauder yeah i did i did the designs for that oh uh, cool and uh, yeah, it, it was kind of hard to figure out. It is a hard thing to figure out on an action figure, oh, totally. but on six inch, it'd probably be even easier because you could get like bigger ball pop joints and stuff. But yeah, yeah that yeah. would have been cool if it was just some sort of harness thing that kind of helped him pop the gun. Because then you could eat, and you could go really crazy with the feature. You could have it like lift up, spin around on his yeah. back, and then it's on his back. You know, as like a oh backpack. yeah. Uh, or like really you know, out of the way, or like comfortably in a position doesn't look ridiculous, and yeah. yeah. But again, that's minor. It's a great figure. It's a great yeah. weapon, and that's a big shout on that. I love the head sculpt. I love the fact they went with, oh, you know, that, that Lenny kind of went with like a a big beard as if he'd been out yeah, there for a long period of time. That, and... that it, it changes his look, but it, it's a lot more common. It's a lot more modern of a look than 
just like the you know the little pencil thin mustache. <laughs> yeah, the, the soul the, patch. The, the soul patch. The, the spit catcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Awesome. Good shout. Good start. So, so for my number two, actually, uh, I'm double dipping into the character again and saying the retro Roadblock. And like like Pat, Roadblock was one of my favorites as a kid. I never gelled with the second version of him. I always loved the first version with the tank top and the, you know, the, the sleeveless and then, you know, the big Ma Deuce and all that stuff. And I, I always <laughs> just thought that was great. And now with the, you know, that, now that they have that Hasbro has the big Ma Deuce that like comes apart and stuff, that's, it's great to redo that figure. You know, I, I like the rescaled head and the, the 25th version was always terrible. Like I never liked that oh, version. Oh yeah, with the that. kind of like the, the, everything was like set, like the joints were it's circular, weren't they? And yeah. like his head was kind of, uh, looked like a kind of a like puffy balloon. Like it was just, it was just not, not a great figure. And, um, and they repainted it like a million times, too, in 21st. So it just kind of kept getting snowballing into worse and worse <laughs> roadblocks <laughs> over the years. We've, um, we've definitely been spoiled in recent years with some cracking yes. roadblock figures, though. That yeah. Tiger Force FSS one is gorgeous. Yeah, this... that's the great figure. The um, the the one that the, the Renegades one that came in the box oh, set is a great figure. God, that and is yeah, sensational. It, even if you don't like the movie and stuff, all, all of those roadblocks from... Apart from uh, the ones that have got the fused things on the except hands. for that, yeah. But the um, <laughs> but the uh, you know, but the all those the rock roadblocks are are great figures. Yeah. Like you, you know, and that, and this figure is mostly one of those. I wish they had chosen different legs that had the uh, double knees and the ankles. But I, I, again, it's it's just such, but honestly, it's such a great looking figure, and you know, just and, and honestly, and not, not to. Not to bring the house down on anything, but it's kind of the only re- retro figure I thought was worthy of actually being released. So, <laughs> <laughs> the rest are the rest seem like and and I'm sorry, GI Joe team at Hasbro, but the rest of them seem very lazy and very. Uh, oh, I'm just, gonna have to I'm gonna have to disagree with you on one of those though uh, when we get to it. Okay, but, we'll, but, we'll argue about that later. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I just think a lot of them are very. Uh, I, I just wish wish there had been a bigger push. If it was just like, oh, just put that out again, put that out again, put that out again. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a there's definite there's a vibe with that, like kind of you know just re-releasing like Destro and and yeah. those kind of guys. I mean, the, again, the these, these are like great. Deco, though, yeah, they're great figures, and there's a, there's a little redeco going on there. But I agree with you. I think um, where they have put time and effort into them, that's where the best figures are in that line. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so brilliant. So take us through your number one then, bud. What's your, what's the top so of the tree? My, my number one, uh, once again, uh, welcome classified Scarlet to the list. Amazing. Uh, that figure is just really nice. I lo- lo- love our articulation. I love the crossbow. Um, I agree with Patty that I wish there was a place to hang the crossbow. In fact, I think the first time I was over at your house playing with it, I mentioned that, Yeah, Chris. And, um, you know, we talked about the freckles and the face. And, uh, you know, it's just... Such a great figure. My my only real complaint is I think she has not too many. I think not too many colors, but too many color breaks. Yeah, there's like yeah. Too, it like starts pulling your eye everywhere at once, and I'm kind of I I think the redeco upcoming kind of fixes some of that. But again, it 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 doesn't break the figure. It's just still a great figure. Absolutely. So it, well, it's really nice. and she must be a good figure anyway because she's she's featured in all three of you so far. All <laughs> three of the top threes. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna be breaking that, but I still have Scarlet in my top three, and we'll start at number three with Retro Series Scarlet. Now, the reason I went with this is because I was just so impressed when I saw the figure. I was I saw it and I thought. This is probably one of my favorite four inch versions of this particular character that I've seen to date. Like I just, I really like the build. I was just kind of really into it in general. And that's basically why it's made the the top three. And I wanted to kind of mix it up a bit and get some retro in there. And for me, she's one of my favorite in that in that lineup. And I have all of the retro figures actually, uh, thanks to Nick at In Demand Toys, Nick and Mass. Um, ironically, before they were started to be seen in uh, in America, which is hilarious. 
if you, so I actually just I was gonna I'm gonna mention this in my next uh, topic when we get to Cobras, but it's been so easier for us Europeans to get this GI Joe product this crazy, year. Crazy, isn't it's it? Amazing. Yeah, crazy. There's like a, there's an ex, with the exception of like a couple where you don't actually see it at all, and that's because of for whatever reason they're not selling them in the UK. You can it's still get the them online there. in the UK. Like you can still find mm. them. So the fact that you're probably you're doing a lot better than we are out here is m- ridiculous, isn't it? Remember, I hooked Justin up with a classified Cobra Trooper from here. Unreal, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, uh, to be fair, Patty has also had to track down some uh, AEW wrestling figures for me. That's crazy. Because you can't get them here at all. Like it's insane. It's funny. Like P- Patty will send us messages like, "Oh, look what's in Smiths," and I'll be like, "You, like, yeah, right." I, I haven't seen that yet anywhere. Like all that micro machine stuff as well. Like I, I know we've had that. That's actually, to be honest, micro machines has been easier to get than most things in the in the states. But my goodness, it's crazy. Anyway, I'll, that's my retro series Scarlet for for three. I just really like the build. I think she's she's definitely she's definitely jumped the list in terms of Scarlet figures at four inch for me. Um, I I just think she's great uh, and really like impressed in hand as well. I just thought she was fantastic. Now, um, moving into the classified arena and i have to go with where it all started and that is the pulse exclusive classified deluxe snake eyes because for me that figure started it all that was the one that kicked off the six inch range and when that was revealed uh, and i remember being at toy fair as well and seeing it like up close and seeing the other figures up close and i I was just blown away absolutely blown away by the 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 detail the articulation the color that they decided to put on the deluxe where you've got like slightly different you know colors going on in there like you know like like a softer brown and yeah yeah just really really nice um packed with accessories the the weapon sprue with all of the the weapons are just absolutely beautiful and I, i just think they kicked off in the best possible way personally and uh it's uh, as much as I, I, every figure I get since jumps up as like the best one ever, but that's you know one of those things that I have a problem with. <laughs> um, but that figure for me is like just stayed in that position of just being solid, brilliant, and amazing. So big shout out to the the team that that worked on that and and everyone and the packaging and every I mean. Everything about it is a, is a pure win for me. Like, you know, that, that box is gorgeous. The design of the... There's a slip cover. There's an embossed box, you know, effect on it. It's just ridiculous. So, yeah, that's, that's number two for me. Number two as well. Can you believe that? Number one has to go for me, yeah, to the beachhead. Uh, and the one reason, uh, and obviously I'll just mirror what... Uh, what Pat discussed earlier on in his in his top three, he, and, and and I spoke about it as well, um, is just the fact that you know we get to get a character a periphery character uh, in a sense already so so early on in the line, and it, for it to be like nailed so beautifully in Beachhead, like the, I just think the detail on that figure is gorgeous. The there's somehow in a balaclava they've managed to get personality in the eyes and 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 everything mm-hmm. and so i mean that alone for me w- was enough to put it in the top spot and just be having that kind of i suppose connection to those kind of characters beachhead was one of them and yeah so he's my number one for definite on that one anyway yeah that's uh that's my top three gi joe figures let's move on to cobra now you're probably already wondering why aren't the cobra in your gi joe top three it's because we're doing it a certain way and uh we wanted to like highlight as many of these figures as possible and so we're going to go with our cobra top three so paddy take us away with your number three in the cobra category this guy is almost certainly on everybody's list um for for certain um it's the target exclusive classified cobra trooper um i'm put i know he's a better figure than number three because um but i'm putting him at number three because he's such a pain to hold to get <laughs> Um, and if he was available at all um, he would probably be the number one figure but I feel they need to be you know finger wagon Hasbro there to get him out there a bit more in the in in in, in, in the general population but great figure perfect update of that character he looks fantastic Um, really like the vest with the spaces to hold all the weaponry really like the weapons he comes with Um, 
just you know small things like the goggles that you can put on them uh, to give them a different look um that um really improves the figure so for my number for my number two um <laughs> i've gone sorry you said number two again <laughs> That's going to happen a lot. Um, we've gone with um, we've gone with retro storm shadow, um, and again, it's kind of for similar reasons that I did retro snake eyes. It is probably the best version of storm shadow that's ever been released, and he's out again. Uh, so you know, a um, little bit of change to the deck goes. He still comes with all those tiny little accessories that immediately you will lose in the carpet. Um, but um, great figure, great sculpt. Um, much better plastic quality than the version that came in the 50th anniversary. He feels a lot more solid than that version. Um, and just, you know, nice figure out again in the stores. So go buy it. They're solid figures. I'll, I'll give you that on that one. Um, I think, well, going to, coming back to what Eric was saying earlier about like the kind of, you know, just reissuing and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. It's nice to, when they do something a little bit different with it, but, you know, I, I guess for some people, it's nice to to get a figure that they may not have been able to get in the first place. So it's, I suppose, there's that aspect to it too. Yeah, and that's kind of why um, I've picked my number one choice, uh, which was a retro 15th anniversary Destro. Um, again, great figure out again, um, but he was quite difficult to get first time in as well because he was in that three pack. Uh, what was it, the Eagle's Nest three pack? Yes. Yes. Um, so maybe not a lot, a lot of people maybe didn't get a chance to get him first time around. Um, gorgeous head sculpt in that figure. Um, you know, and again, a very nice vintage update. Looks like, you know, the, looks like the vintage figure, but cooler. And that really cool briefcase with the um, assemb- assemblable gun uh, in the briefcase as well. I really like that accessory. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, that's Paddy's top three Cobras. Let's move on to Patrick. Stuart, sir, uh, if you would take us through your top three, Cobra, starting with number three. Uh, I went for number three with Classified Cobra Commander, the standard release in the dark blue. Interesting. I think that a large part of the reason why I chose Cobra Commander was because that that's obviously he's a character that's been designed and released many times and redesigned in the comics. There's a lot of different looks that you can go with with Cobra Commander, and I'm certain that the team took a look at all of that as they were pouring over what what classified Cobra Commander should look like. And I think that they really hit the nail on the head with a lot of the details that really have defined Cobra Commander over the years. Uh, they went with the silver faceplate. Uh, obviously, the hooded one is also a very popular look for Cobra Commander, but I think I think the face plate's more iconic personally and he definitely has a little bit of a, a a dressy look to him like it's his uniform looks very uh well i don't want to say regal because that's that's the other one <laughs> uh but it's it's definitely a good look for cobra commander in, in a lot of modern designs i think that i see a lot of textures and a lot of layers put on things and there's nothing over designed about this one either. So I really think that they did a good job. Anything else that they put out after this, I don't think is would necessarily be to perfect Cover Commander. It would just be to give everybody some options because I think that as far as classified goes, this is the great uh, looking standard, you know, sets the bar Cover Commander. I would ha- like, like I, I agree with you, what you're saying there, but I'm, I'm also, like I said before, whenever I get a new thing through, that jumps to the top of the, the list. Exactly the same with Regal Cobra Commander. He came in the other day. I'm like, oh, this is now my favorite because it's all shiny and new. So like, <laughs> I'm just terrible. I'm the worst when it comes to this stuff. You know, you can like look at it objectively and say, you know, this is the reason I like this one. And I'm just like, yeah, it's shiny. It's new. That's my new favorite thing. So, uh, yeah, but good shout on Cobra Commander. is a wicked design. Uh, and then my number my number two, again, you know, it's, it's a lot of... <laughs> that's, that's what this whole thing is, I guess, a lot of number two. Hopefully not. Uh, is, Cobra, is Cobra Island classified Baroness with the, with the coil? Um, not so much for the coil part of it, but Baroness, the sculpt on that figure is outstanding. Again, probably similar to Scarlet. There's just a lot of character in the face. And the thing that impressed me, because I think that it could have been done very poorly and it was done very well, 
or the glasses. You know, they on, on action figures, a lot of times they look either too thick, uh, the reflection on them, they, maybe you don't see through them very well, or they, they kind of come out crooked once they're manufactured. If, if the manufacture, even, even if the design part of it's good, if the manufacturing end of it isn't, the, the figure can just look really bad. And that one looks great. So I'm very satisfied with that figure. I have to agree that the, um, the, 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 the sculpt on Baroness is stunning. And like, I know she's, she's very like, there's, it, it's, it's difficult to do something new with the Baroness without going like really far away from what she, what she already currently looks like. And I think this is one of those cases where she is different enough like in this this new design um to be something new and something kind of fresh and cool but that face sculpt is astonishing like it's just it's it, it's perfection it's like they've they've literally been able to sculpt a perfect head in and it just blows my mind because like the again the glasses look fantastic and i think that separation is important rather than sculpting a head with like almost sculpted glasses on having that gap and that like that feeling of like 3d is just is really important for that particular figure and they pulled it off dramatically and and i think that there's that i i saw in was it in your interview that they said that uh she was made to look just a little bit older than some of the other characters yes. next cross you can really tell that that the job that they are doing as far as what they want to be, you know, in the package and make it to plastic is actually what is happening. So that was a great sign because I actually got that from looking at the figure. And then whenever he said he said that, it's like, oh, this this adds up, you know, because that that's what they wanted is is the feeling that I got from it. I think she's great. Um, I I actually think that she could, they could have pushed further from her original design a little bit, but, but I'm going to say that about everybody um, in Classified. So, but yeah, the glasses, the face, the gorgeous sculpt, the, the, you're right, the glasses are very good to pull off and perform, and they look fantastic on that figure. Um, I like that there's little, like, cobras yeah. on the edges, and I'm I'm in the minority that I, I love that coil cycle. I think it's really cool. I love that the it kind of works the, the steering. The, the yeah, steering yeah. Works, and I love that the handles are on ball joints, so it, it makes it easier to like get the figure's hands on there and stuff. That's actually true, honestly, because I hadn't really thought about why that was the case. But yeah, that is it's probably ease, isn't it, to kind of get the actual yeah. figure in place? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it makes it makes a huge difference putting a figure out there. Because <laughs> I bet that. that's weird in reality. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I love the big thick tires on it and stuff. It it, it kind of reminds every everybody says it reminds them of Akira, and I think that's because of the colors. Yeah, uh, and there's mm -hmm. definitely some Akira, but it um, but it really reminds me of the uh, Judge Dredd's yeah. motorcycle. Like that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I like yeah. And oh, I can't. Yeah. I, I really hope that they um, repaint it a couple of times. So it would make a great silver mirage. It would make a great uh, ram redesign if they kind of get you know to replace like the guns on the front and stuff. Made some changes to it. Like it would just be very cool to to see that. I, actually, that's almost the main reason that I, I love that Baroness is that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see a, a kind of realistic paint job on it, like as in, you know, like a bit of weathering or like a bit of like metallic maybe going on there. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I must admit, I don't have a problem with the bike at all. Like I, when I first saw it, I thought this is really fun, really sci-fi, really elaborate, and that's perfect for the Baroness. And you didn't mention it before, I don't think, Pat. You might have done when I was muted, but the, the, the coiled snake weapon. Oh, yeah, that's really right. unreal, isn't it? Yeah, it comes across as uh, almost like jewelry, but also a weapon, which yeah. is very Baroness-like. So it's in character. I like it. Diamond-encrusted snake rifle that wraps around your arm. Weird. Um, yeah. yeah, and you're number one. I'm really excited for this, even though I know exactly what it is. Uh, Target exclusive, Cobra Island, Cobra Trooper. Yay! <laughs> I think this may also be a callback to those toys that I had as a kid. Cobra was my very first figure that I ever got in the G.I. Joe toy line. I thought you were going to say very first love for a second there. 
No, just my first figure. I, I remember opening him for my birthday in 1982. So like kissing it like that. Uh, <laughs> so this update to him, I thought was outstanding. There for for a while there, like prior to 25th, there would even sometimes be debates over which is the better Cobra Trooper, the original one or the Viper, and which one is more iconic for GI Joe. And I think that it's the original Cobra that, yes. is, that is definitely the one that is is more yeah. iconic. So, well, I, the, the, the the original the original Trooper continued beyond like as the Viper was brought in as well. So it wasn't like yeah. it wasn't like it went away. Like it, it was still in the you know it was still in the cartoons. It was still in the comic. It was, yeah. it was it was always you know, they always came back to it. So yeah, it, that's one of the that's what I suppose one of the reasons why that iconography like continues. You know, yeah. it's strong because it c keeps going even though there's a new guy in town, kind of thing. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent on that. Like the uh, the the viper one, the viper. Even as a kid, I was like, well, the the silver faces Cobra Commanders thing. Like so, I was kind of always bummed out of that. Not that I don't love the Viper design; it's a fantastic design. But I always prefer the Cobra Troopers. Yeah, and I, I don't see them necessarily as as taking another one's spot either. Like I feel like the Vipers were a little bit more kind of special missiony type. If, if you picture Vipers, the Viper Corps more like Marines. Yeah, and the yeah. Troopers more like Cobra's army. Yeah, yeah, like the, the green shirts, effectively. Yeah, yeah. Kind of separate them, and they, it starts to make a little bit more. To more me, sense. It, yeah, it, it kind of. It, it's like green shirts and steel brigade versus um yeah. cobra troopers and vipers that's that's what i see that kind of uh yeah that that's where i see them like lining up and everyone they can all exist in the same universe too which is great like that's the other beauty part of it yeah good shout pat yeah and the accessories that figure comes with are so plentiful that you you can actually have a few of well if you can find them <laughs> <laughs> look different from one another I still think that they could do another run of those and sell out of them. I really do. I, I totally agree sure. with you. I'm so happy they're bringing the infantry out as well. Like that, again, that's gonna that's gonna make a bit of diversity within the um, visually within the the ranks of those troopers. Like you'll have slightly different deco on the infantry, but then at the same time you've got goggles that you can put on the the target exclusive or not. So you can have the sniper. You can have like the the uh the the armband which creates a squad leader so you've got all these different things that you can almost you can almost use the target exclusive as the squad leader and yeah. the infantry as the troop like that's it doesn't have to be an army builder like the 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 target exclusive doesn't have to be an army builder there you go guys there's the massive drop right there focus your army building on the infantry and keep the uh the target as the squad leader done assuming that that's easy enough to find good point good point Although I did order six of them from uh, Roma Collectibles, so... <laughs> Yay! Um, okay. Yay, <laughs> cracking, cracking top three there, Pat. Really, uh, really into that. Um, Eric, you're up next, buddy. Top three Cobras. Oh, top three Cobras. Um, so some of these we already talked about. The My uh, my number three is the Target Exclusive Special Missions Cobra Island Classified <gasps> Baroness Coil. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's great. Check. Um, we, we already kind of talked. We already kind of talked talk this through. But yeah, I love the figure. I love the bike. It's just gorgeous. Um, the, the snake, this coiled snake thing actually reminds me it, back in my teenage days as a... Uh, hardcore long-haired metalhead with nail polish and skull rings and all that stuff i had this um <laughs> coiled snake bracelet that like <laughs> was like springy and it would like so it would wrap tight around my arm and like this thing like ended on like my hand and so that reminds me of that which is just hilarious that is the sexiest um, thing i've ever heard if there isn't a picture of that I i'm gonna was, be very disappointed i was um a degenerate and and look at least i looked it i i maybe wasn't but uh people yeah. across the street and um so anyway uh my number two <laughs> is uh the target exclusive special missions cobra island classified cobra trooper and <laughs> It's, he's only doing that because I've written that on the document in full, yeah. so we're not confused yeah. by anything. And I love the fact you're reading every single word. It's beautiful. Again, the uh, Cobra Trooper 
is like you know I can't say anything more about it than than Patty and Patrick already said, and that's you know like he, he's very cool, very very nice update visually. He's a little more techy and stuff. I I love the the guns. I love the guns. Kind of like we touched on that too, basing basing them on Nerf guns and stuff. Oh yeah, um, he's packed with Nerf. It's nerf he's, or he's nothing for that guy, isn't it? Like, basically, he's got nerf up the bum there, like <laughs> a lot. And, uh, he, um, yeah, he's just very cool, and I always prefer Cobra Troopers over, you know, the Viper Corps and stuff. Not that I didn't love the Viper Corps characters and stuff as well, but the Cobra Troopers were just so iconic visually to me. Um, I my my uh, my wish is that eventually they do that Cobra Trooper. Cobra Trooper again in kind of an homage to the comic decos, which are my favorite Cobra Trooper visually, with yeah. the kind of tan tannish yellow straps and the red mask and yeah, the brighter. Yeah. Like, that's my favorite Cobra Trooper deco. And then my, my number my number one has not been talked about yet, and that's uh, Classified Destro. Brilliant. He's a very simple, nice update to his visuals, to his original visuals. There's some cool like you know ribbing and stuff that kind of looks very like mo modern motorcycle jacket armor <laughs> type of thing <laughs> ribbed for eric's and, pleasure well he's yeah his new outfit is ribbed for the target exclusive special missions cobra island classified baroness figure <laughs> with all cycle and her pleasure and um the <laughs> but yeah the um I, you know, I like the head. I like the kind of, you know, he still has the red car collar and stuff. And that, that may go against what I've been saying about the updates, but, you know, where he could have been updated more. But it, they stuck just, really close, didn't they, with the uh, the original you know, styling there? But there's, close. again, again, what, what I think they do with Classified is they do the details so much justice that it becomes something new and original. Yeah. And like, like you say that, uh, it, and it, man, it looks like the Prime 1 statue design. Like, it's got so many similar, like, paneling details and like the... And like the, like the interior kind of almost like padded collar, like the with the yeah. lines on it. I, I I agree with you. I think it's they've stuck very close to the original, but at the same time, if you really get close to it and look at it, there's so much in that yeah. that is that is kind of fresh, you know. Well, wouldn't it be cool if he had come with? Um, I, I'm a big fan of like effects on toys and stuff, blaster muzzle flares and. Blaster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If he had come with a piece that oh. had. Like made it look like the missiles were actually launching. Like a little, yeah, like a yeah. little kind of like bubbly yeah, trail. Uh, smoke trail with the with yeah. the missile on the end of it. Oh, that would have been insane! Yeah. Or even better than that, my dear, you could have <laughs> you could have had like the the tips of the missiles lot like uh, like you know come off, have three spots and have like. Almost like three different levels of missile distances coming off the. Yeah. That would have been mm -hmm. so. Like a Wolverine's claws. That would have been amazing. I've seen those on um, some of the Legends War Machines have had that for his rocket launcher where you have multiple rockets yeah, launching. Yeah. Effects, yeah. So that dope. Been, that would have been fun at addition. Yeah, it's, it's failed. It's, it's off the top, top now because of that. Because it didn't have yeah. that. Yeah. It ticked it off. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, an honorable mention I will make while we're talking about Destro is the Profit Director Destro because those accessories oh, are yeah. hilarious. Yeah. The money on fire, brilliant. Just hilarious. Brilliant. Hilarious uh, callback. Yeah, love that. That was really fun. Lo lo cracking deco as well. Absolutely gorgeous deco. Anyway, Eric, brilliant top three of Cobra uh, characters there, mate. I am going to jump on with mine now uh scrolling to the right place because i've forgotten what i've chosen obviously at number three we've all talked about it already is the target exclusive special missions cobra island yada 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 cobra trooper um it's nerf or nothing i love it it's beautiful um nothing else to add we've already talked about it so there we go that's my number three uh this is the beauty of going third isn't it um at number two now i will talk about this one in depth <laughs> everyone's like snooze um red ninja classified red ninja absolutely just one of my favorite figures of the year uh, uh, in general because this was one and it, again it does go it does kind of you know cover the same issue i mentioned earlier where if i get something very recently that becomes my focus until the next thing turns up and that's kind of what happened here because this was one of those ones that came out in wave two 
it was out in Walgreens and it was out in in stores and people were managing to get it. I wasn't one of those people. I'd ordered it, pre-ordered it on Pulse, and it wasn't coming out for many, many moons afterwards. So I was still trying to get hold of one. Couldn't find them anywhere. Eventually, um, I think I managed to get some. Uh, the, the, the Pulse ones came in, and then I'm and then they went up on Pulse again recently, and I got two more. So yay! Um, but again, the figure. Just talking about the figure. Yes, most of it is Snake Eyes, but le- he was my number. You know, he was up there in my top three. Uh, it's a great figure. The articulation is possibly some of the best articulation in an action figure ever. That deluxe snake eyes. Um, and uh, I know Fred, when I he had a mess around with the one that I got, um, I managed to get early. He uh, took a picture of it in this almost like Spider Man pose. Like, you know, like he was like, re- and I was like, how did, first of all, I, I, I'm very jealous of the way that. Most people at Boss Fight compose figures. It drives me <laughs> mad. Like, Dave Proctor is probably one of the greatest action figure posers of all time. Yeah, uh, and and, and I, 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 it always used to blow my mind the kind of poses you get them in. Anyway, Fred is just the same pretty much, isn't he? We all, we all tend to design and engineer figures to into this. It's like the tap of what we do. Yeah. So... Yeah, but it, it just amazes me. And then Fred does this with the Snake Eyes figure, and I'm like, that's incredible. So obviously the Red Ninja can do the same. I'm not going to try because I'm rubbish at it. But the actual Red Ninja itself, like, you know, the additional, like, secondary just makes it a completely different figure. The head sculpt is fantastic. You can the, barely tell it's that Snake Eyes body. Exactly. The color. I love the fact it's not just your standard Red Ninja done. Yeah. It's, like, maroon and... You know, like this kind of like almost like a purple color going on almost. Yeah. It's just yeah. Ab- there's some like more, like dark, like burgundies and stuff thrown in there. I mean, if you want, want a normal red Arasakagi ninja, you can go over to Marvel Legends and buy that one. Exactly, like- and again, that's really cute as well. I do like oh, that figure, really nice. but this is like a next level. And the other thing, I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this. I don't think we've discussed it necessarily. I'm sure people have talked about it, and I'm sure you guys may have talked about it online. But um, I can see almost a night creeper repaint in there as well like i can almost see like the shape of a night creeper and you, you could easily like the deco you could do on that would definitely take it away from a red ninja and you'd maybe give it a different head sculpt even though that head is pretty close to what a night creeper kind of looks like you could pre- you could get away with some reuse there and probably that's, even just a standard repaint that's one of the figures in the classified line where i think they've gone far enough from the original concept and visual where it's like that's where i that's the sweet spot that i think that they should be hitting um and some of the figures fall into them fall into their like cobra commander really hit hit that kind of sweet spot as well or it's different enough um but yeah that that red ninja it it, i i hadn't been over to chris's for a little while (laughs) over the day and had I been over before I made this list, uh, there are two figures that probably would have been on my list instead uh, of two of the ones that I, I had on there. And that was probably the Red Ninja and the um, the Storm Shadow. Oh, God, yeah. Storm, Storm Shadow is cool there. as well, yeah. Mind, I love that. I love playing with that figure. You see, like Storm Shadow for me is really, really cool. I'd love him. And he would have been up there, but for one tiny thing, which actually creates a bigger issue... And that's not having the lower leg articulation. Yeah, the thighs, the, the shin swivel. There's, we talked about that. Yeah, actually. With, yeah, without that, it makes that figure very difficult to pose in the same way you can pose Snake Eyes and every other figure in the line, pretty much. Is so, he the only one that doesn't have it? Uh, yeah, I think he is. He's literally the only figure that doesn't have that lower that boot cut because the rest of them, and this is, uh, Lenny did mention this on the, um, on the interview we did with him in the part two, there wasn't an aesthetic break that would look right for it. So because of his boot goes all the way up to the knee, if you were to put that swivel in there, it would break all of those lines that um, that connect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with the other guys, they've got like a boot that comes to the top or they've got like, you know, like a, a an element that gives you that option to kind of do it. So, um, yeah. Not to be a dick, but... Yeah, but you could have designed that. You designed the boot. <laughs> like, sorry, <laughs> it is a gorgeous figure. I really do love that figure. Like, I thought it was amazing. No, you, it's a very good point that, and uh, it, but yeah, and and Lenny has mentioned that's his only regret with the line so far. And is that Lenny? If you're watching, 
and I, I love you. You're you're amazing, <laughs> a good friend and stuff. But um, storm the next storm shadow has to come with a sniper rifle. <laughs> like he is an assassin at heart, and he needs. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's Red Ninja, number two. Um, uh, but again, one last thing on the Red Ninja. I love the, the, the what they came up with in terms of holding all of those accessories. The yeah. three-pronged yeah, backpack, cool. like the three-sheath backpack, is perfect for the two camera and the long, kind of really long, kind of like almost like long-handled spiked weapon. Uh, and then to have the sword slide into the little side sheath and then you can hold the two axes is just brilliant now i would have liked the axes to be put away because i like them to have like all complete freedom when they're carrying everything but to be honest it's a it's a nitpick and also they don't have to carry every weapon they can you can mix and match with these guys too that's the other beauty part of it you know you can have a sword guy like the foot clan you know the sword guy the the camera guy the axe guy the that wielding that thing and then you can have like a, a team leader that's got everything on him you know you can do that so that's yeah, that's really wicked. Anyway, Red Ninja, love him, uh, and he and I've got four of them now. Um, <laughs> my number one, Cobra uh, of 2020, 2020, 2020, 20, which is a new year with more 20s on it, um, is Snake Supreme Deluxe Cobra Commander, because, wow. when Again, for me, I know it's been like, I spoke about the Deluxe Snake Eyes as being high up on my G.I. Joe list, with this one, it's a similar thing. It's it's the whole package. You know, S Sana Takeda's beautiful artwork, you know, like monstrous fame. You've got um, the actual, you know, the box construction and design and engineering where it splits in half and the figure appears in the middle is like, like mind-blowing. Like the, the, there's a slip cover. There's a beautiful, like, almost like... Um, it's like one of those like album covers, like Led Zeppelin's album cover with all the cutout windows and you slide it out and you've got like, you know, the, the people that are in those windows and everything. It's just things like that. It's just brilliant. The figure itself, the cape is gorgeous, like with a, almost like a forked tongue. Yeah, yeah, it's with the snake skin and the, 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 and the inside is like a different, it's like the red and everything. It's just the deco. The, the the detail of the deco pieces on like the chest and it's just gorgeous and and yeah for me it's it's up there as like one of the best the glow becomes with which I was so surprised snapped into the hand as opposed to rested there which yeah. I was just I was just expecting that to be the case and it's not like there's a groove or anything it just the 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 hand is done in such a way that it just clips in a weird way it just holds the ball beautifully and it's just it's just great so i'm i was blown away by that and that's my number one of the year for cobra figures um what do you guys think of that particular cobra figure i have it in hand yet so <laughs> i'm hoping that i get mine and those those little touches like the the globe snapping into the hand aren't aren't something i would have experienced yet so i'm sorry mate well i i messed with yours the other day and and i um I have to say the initial deco of Cobra Commander didn't impress me. I it didn't it I felt like it didn't bring out the sculpt as well as I wanted it to. But man, that one is freaking gorgeous. I I I love all the little added details. I love the globe. Oh, um, the, he's got a sheath for his pistol as well. So that's another yeah. added bonus. That doesn't something that you don't get with Regal or Standard. So no 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 Pat. Toned cape front and back is very expensive by the way soft goods with yeah and it's like the faux leather on the one side and stuff yeah that is really an expensive piece to add to a, a product um so kudos to them for doing it at all because got the little little flat I, I mean it's just it's stunning it's it's absolutely stunning so i'm just going to keep rubbing it in pat's face while we uh while we're on this particular subject i have one on order it, it, it'll be for too long <laughs> uh, but honestly mate it's good cool. and you'll you'll believe me when you when you open the box it's like you hear the hallelujah choir going off you know as you're opening it's like, oh, and the light shines it's amazing uh anyway yes yeah, so that's my number one uh cobra figure of the year We've still got we've still got two more <laughs> we've still got two more segments to go. Right back to you, uh, Paddy. Uh, we are doing GI Joe merch of 2020. Hit us with your third. 
Right, there's probably not as much to talk about in this category, so I'll rinse through my three. First up is the Jada Toys Nano Hollywood Rides, um, those little G.I. Joe vehicles. Fantastic. Um, again, some very, you know, G.I. Joe had some really iconic, nice little vehicle designs, so it's really nice to see, get to get the designs out there again. I know they don't fit a figure or whatever, but, you know, Snowcat's cool, Vamp is cool. You know, they're cool. Um, Agreed. Next number two is the Hasbro Pulse Con Snake Eyes T-shirt. Um, which I don't think you're wearing at the moment, Chris. No, but I do it's have it. Weird. It's it's yeah. I'll, I won't it's, I won't yeah, get it. We'll, a, we've spent enough time. It's really nice. Out. It's just cool little t-shirt thing. And my number one, I actually am wearing at the moment. Hey. It's the uh, Lucy Ching uh, Snake Eyes t-shirt with her box art, um, gorgeous box art, um, and it's on a t-shirt and I can wear it. So yay! <laughs> Biggest Snake Eyes fanboy ever. It's a shit. Yeah, I'm shocking. <laughs> <laughs> No, at all, man. That Tracy Ching art is sensational. And uh, I, we had the pleasure of interviewing her on the show. Absolutely superb artist and uh, did a great job on that Snake Eyes thing. And brilliant to chat to as well. She was so fu- she was so funny and great. So big shout out to Tracy Ching. Love that artwork. Fantastic choices there from Paddy. Moving on, Patrick, take us through your top three merch, please, my man. 